President Biden has a bold midterm strategy. Just do the bare minimum. The big guy is so unpopular with Americans that even though he says he wants to help candidates, Democrats just can't afford to be dragged down by his failed presidency. But someone forgot to tell Joe. John Fetterman's going to appear with you today yeah. in Pennsylvania, but there haven't been that many candidates campaigning with you. Why That's are more? That's not true. There have been 15. Count. Get count. Okay, and uh, are there going to be even more? Yeah. What? Tim Ryan in Ohio said he doesn't want you there. Warnock said wouldn't say. Do you think they're making a mistake? No, there are 16 there I've already gone in for yet, and a lot more are asked. Another 20 or so. so I'm going to be going in. Joe Biden thinks no president has done more than he has. And with that boast, you'd think he would be greeted by football-sized stadiums of adoring fans. Instead, Biden stood in front of a bridge with 80-plus people today. <laughs> And later tonight, he'll be behind closed doors with John Fetterman, who at least put on a suit for it. Mm -hmm. And if this strategy fails, the media has Biden covered. Just compare voters to Hitler. I'll remind people, too, of a history lesson that there, in the 1930s Germany, there was a candidate and there was a party that said they were going to do something about inflation. And they did do something about inflation. Inflation went away, but so did the democracy in Germany. In, in, in the 1930s up until 1945. But there's too much reporting on something voters already are aware of and not enough on what voters may be unaware of, which is the threat to democracy. So here we have Joe Biden. Nobody's really interested in campaigning with him, but he said, I think, 16 and then maybe 20, whatever he said. Why do you think that is, Dana? Well, there's hundreds of can candidates that are candidates that are campaigning as Democrats right now. And the, the, the reason is because his poll numbers are a drag. It's like trying to run a marathon with 20-pound weights on your ankle. It's like, oh, my God, i got to carry the president across the finish line here. I think that he's campaigned where he has gone, fine, whatever. What he could say is, I am for every Democrat winning. They all need to do what they need to do. But they forget that even Stacey Abrams nine months ago yes. on the signature issue of voter suppression down in Georgia, mm -hmm. she had a scheduling conflict and couldn't be there. When the president arrived, she never explained what that scheduling conflict was. It was just remains a mystery, and who knows what it'll be. Um, what's interesting is he he can't say that his ego won't let him say it's fine. Everybody needs what they need to do. I'm focused yeah. on winning. I'm going to go raise some money tonight for John Fetterman, and mm -hmm. I'm going to pass this money around. There's an easy way to answer it. But on the day after the midterms, when he has a conversation with his family about his running again, you don't have an option to stay in the basement this time. That is not going to be an option. So then what is the campaign trail going to look like for him? Then if he really does run, then we'll know what's going on. Do you think, Jesse, that the results of the midterm uh, are going to be such that Joe Biden will be told you're not running in 2024? He may be told that. He might not listen, but he'll be told that. And he that's might what... forget he's been told. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then they're going to crank up the Hunter thing. I just feel disappointed that we were denied the opportunity to see Joe and Fetterman together on stage. Joe <laughs> sniffing his lump. Joe <laughs> oh. <laughs> claiming that he actually had a heart attack when he didn't or when he finds out that Fetterman's wife's bisexual, inviting them to skinny dip together in Delaware. Those are the priceless moments that we were denied, and that's unfortunate. No, you're priceless. <laughs> So he's toxic, and that's why he snaps. He's mad because he doesn't want to be seen in Pennsylvania. That's like his second Delaware. Barack Obama, Bush, Trump all had low poll numbers during these midterms, yet they all campaigned hard pre-November. Now, why was that? Because they had really raucous bases mm -hmm. that wanted to be out there and would do anything to be in that crowd. Now, do you want to be in the crowd at a Biden speech? Do you want to see a guy in a coma? You don't want to be there. It's the least fun thing you could possibly do because he can't talk and there is no Biden voter. There's no Biden base. They were just yep. anti-Trump Democrats. Right. That's all that is. OK, so Piers Obama steps in to save the mm. day. I mean, we all know that Joe Biden isn't having any rallies. The last one was on Labor Day, I think, with a union where they set up the number of people in the room. So Obama is coming in. What's that about? Well, he's, they're trying to shore it up, aren't they? Because they know they're heading for a big beating, I think, in the midterms. I mean, there are two things that struck me about that. One is, how have we got to a place where if you care about inflation, you're a Nazi? Yeah. <laughs> we seem to have just skirted <laughs> over that. That guy on MSNBC, I don't know who he is, but... <laughs> 
completely insane. Um, yeah. Anyway, but that was my first thought about him. My second thought was watching Biden and hearing the, the sort of distancing that's going on from him and why Obama's had to come in. I remember once interviewing Mickey Rourke uh, when he was going through his wilderness years. So you remember he was the biggest star in Hollywood and then suddenly, yeah. bang, he was cut and gone. And he was, it was a fascinating interview. And he's, you know, everywhere he went, people that used to gravitate to him and come and hug him and tell him how great he was, suddenly he'd see them literally at Starbucks. They'd go, they'd go the other way. <laughs> in restaurants, they wouldn't come over. They'd cower in the corner. And he said, I soon worked out what it was. They didn't want to catch the stench of deadly failure. Yeah. <laughs> and he said it was like a virus. And he said in Hollywood, that was it. He, got, he just got frozen out. And this happens in politics, yeah. is that people actually think, look, this guy has got toxic, deadly failure mm -hmm. emanating from his every pore. I don't need or want him anywhere near me. And that's a bad place for mm -hmm. uh, Biden to find himself at this stage. And it's, all, it's presumably why Obama's come in, because mm -hmm. Obama, love him, hate him. He's a, he's a good talker. He can get crowds out. And he did get re-elected. I, you know, Biden, I would be astonished if he gets re-elected. OK, go ahead, Greg, wrap uh, it up. Well, obviously, the Democrats are desperate. As for the midterms, it looks like the only October surprise will be in Joe Biden's pants. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to pick up on what um, Pierce said, because it's 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 the Dems just keep lowering the bar on Nazi criteria. Mm -hmm. I mean, Hitler must be spinning in his grave if he's alive or dead. Because you get, you're, you're comparing parents who just are experiencing $450 extra in cost just to maintain their current living status. That, being upset about that means you're just like Hitler. I think even Hitler would be a little upset at this. He'd be like, dude, I killed millions of Jews and other people. I take a, I demand an apology for Matthew Dowd. This, Matthew Dowd giving a history lesson is like O.J. Simpson giving marriage counseling. <laughs> if you look at somebody like that, who's like gone off the deep end, didn't he try to run for something yeah. and pu pulled out faster than this British prime minister? <laughs> um, I mean, literally did pull out faster. Yeah, he said he was too white to run. Too white to run. Yeah. I, he, I, I would say he might live in a bubble, but he just strikes me as somebody who's so entirely friendless that, and, and then these, you've got these MSNBC producers that just take advantage of these people who are just so desperate mm -hmm. for attention, right? And yeah. that's what this He'll is. Say He'll say anything, put them up there. CNN used to do that. Now it's MSNBC's grift. But also, like, why isn't the history lesson on inflation about Ronald Reagan? Yes, or, or just like, about inflation I, in general. Good point. I don't understand. It's about Hitler. Yeah. Why can't you just say that everyone should be concerned about inflation? Yeah. <laughs> and then it doesn't mean Nazis. you're a member of the shit stuff. <laughs> right. Like, all right. Unbelievable. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.